Good evening, Robert. Hello. 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 Hey, <laughs> Eric, what's going on? He said, long time no see, Mom. I know. Oh, God, of course. I <laughs> Somebody's calling me, but never mind. I thought I muted it, but hang on. Now my papers fell down. Uh, I'm in a bad way. There we go. Oh, We're good. We're good. Okay. All right, so look, I've had a lot of people, Eric, talk about this this planet, Nibur, Nibiri, Nibiru. That is supposed to like end our civilization or whatever. So I thought, well, it's kind of important. We'll go ahead and ask. All right. So here we go. This is from a blog member. Mm -hmm. Nibiru, or planet X, as it's known by, is a planet three to five times bigger than planet Earth. It comes into our solar system about every 3,600 years. It has caused much havoc to the Earth in the past. Sounds like a bad dude. Ancient texts have also talked about it cause as maybe the cause of Noah's great flood. There are a lot of videos on YouTube, which I do not have time to watch. People send them to me all the time. The government has denied it exists. Many are now seeing it in the skies. There is so much to it. I just want to know if Eric knows what is going on with all of this. I hope you can take some time to view some of the videos. No. Thanks for your time <laughs> in considering this. Peace and love to all uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, could you let me know if and when this will be presented? Um, I watch your blog, but I just don't want to miss anything. So, yeah, yeah, I, I told her to just make sure she contacts me in a couple of weeks to find out. So, yeah. So, what about this Planet X thing? Nibiru. Nibiru. Eric said, okay. He said it exists. Um... The way it affects Earth and everything in the solar system is different now than the way it did a long time ago, Mom. Mm -hmm. um, it's not anything to be afraid of, but it does. Okay, Eric says, you know how on Earth there are currents that create, you know, different air pressures and things create winds, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. flows, and all that. The same thing Eric says exists in in a, in a certain form in space. Ah, uh, this, this planet is further away than it used to be, mm -hmm. but there are times when it comes in a little closer. The way it orbits, it affects how everything. I mean, I don't. I guess there's a kind of wind in space. I don't know. I thought there was nothing in space, but it affects how. Oh, it affects more of gravity. He says that's what creates these different what we might call winds, but it's really not. Like so forces, how, like, like different changes in forces or whatever. Yeah, okay. so it affects the gravity, mm -hmm. right? Gravity itself gets affected by everything that's moving around near each other. Oh yeah. So. That affects uh, the spin of the earth, and it can affect how people uh, feel physically and all these things, right? It can affect the weather patterns on Earth. Mm. So absolutely, uh, it can cause changes on this planet, and it can cause changes on a lot of other planets, but not in the way that it used to, he says. What did it do 3,600 years ago to us, to Earth? Uh, he says it was partly responsible for causing a small ice age. Hmm. There was an ice age 3,600 years ago? I don't know. Did it cause uh, Noah's flood? The Great Flood? He said the flood was like, well, he said you could say on a certain level, sure. What do you mean? Uh, because it's not necessarily that the planet like caused that. It's like there's a whole bunch of other events that then created the, the flood scenario. Oh, okay. They were all set in motion by that planet. Partly, there were others. There were two other bodies out there that also were part of it. So as they orbit and they change, but those other bodies are gone now. He said. Okay. But, but um, <clears throat> yes, they can affect all that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just smelled something funny. Well, that's Eric. Is that Eric? <coughs> he makes some noxious smells sometimes. It smells like someone threw powder at my nose. <laughs> uh oh! Wow. Oh. Anyway, I hope that made sense because I got distracted for a minute. Smell came in. Yeah, no, 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 no. So, so, is, so they show me this. It's, they show me like, uh, like this visual of like you know all the little the bodies floating around. And, you know, uh, I've seen this played out before, so it, this is why it makes sense to me. And like, like you get this the sun sitting there, and like 
you know, the fabric of space, you know, the sun kind of bubbles it down and everything else is doing that too. And this planet comes in and it slightly changes how all of that is sitting. And then everything orbit wise and, you know, of course, then energy wise and all that gets changed. Yeah. So is this planet X, is it coming toward, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's X, is it coming toward us? It's in a closer trajectory than it has been for thousands of years. What, but, what effect will it have? Um, he says part of it is environmental. For example? Well, he said, he said now, he said, uh, now this is where I can't say everything is all one thing, right? Because he said in the universe, collectively, everything works together. It's like a symphony. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't create a symphony with just one violin. So there's all these different things that, that produce that. Um, so the environment, a lot of the changes that are going on that have been building up, partially have been affected by that. Some of it, he says, is, you know, just because of um, uh, what humans have done. Yeah. Because he said, we really have. He said, people may not want to believe it, but we really, we really have. <clears throat> but we're just one part of it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the changes that are going on there, he says, but uh, uh, also a lot of the unrest, like human beings, their emotion, they're, they're very fragile emotion. Mm. To, and uh, in particular, when energy changes, that's where we're fragile emotion, he says. So we'll have a lot of um, um, emotional... Well, we have more unrest. Breaks. Like going yeah. On. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is that why we're having the, the, the terrorists and the Brussels? Yeah. Trashing right. all that is, is it because of Planet X in part? I know it's a symphony, in, in but part, yeah, but because Eric says, Mom, if you look through history, uh, like if you look at history, like over many, many years, thousands, mm -hmm. millennia, you'll see that there are periods where things are calm, and then there are great yeah. spots where things are a little crazy, <laughs> yeah, and then it can get you know uh, a little more extreme than others, and maybe there's you know long swaths where there's a lot of craziness, but it's not quite as extreme maybe as it had been at certain points. And those extreme points, that's when there's a lot of changes within, within the, uh, like the, you know, the gravity and with a lot of other things. Uh, Eric says, I'll just speak generically, in energy that then affect how human beings behave. Yeah. Life itself. It's like the change, change of the magnetic poles can cause right. people to go nuts. All, all animals on this, all life on this planet reacts to that. Human yeah. beings, because, because, of how we, how our consciousness is is manifesting itself, we tend to react in very emotional ways, which then cause us to be more violent or more mentally unstable in other ways, with you know depression, anxiety, or um, or whatnot. I remember when I was a resident in my training in, in medicine, when there was a full moon, all hell broke loose. Babies would be born like crazy. I mean, that's, that's labor right. and delivery was crazy. And then you'd have all sorts of crazy people coming in through the ER. It's like, <laughs> right. Eric says, Mom, that's a perfect example. He says, you know, you've seen it firsthand. Um, oh, yeah. The moon itself, when it's full, it's in a different place, you know, and it's in a different state. And that affects how the energy is on the planet. So, so will this planet X destroy us? Destroy us? In the near future. In the near future. Wow, your your voice just like turned into like uh, an insect sound. Oh, what's a, I've never heard an insect talk. So what it was like, is that? It, the way it sounded, it was like an echo, and it was like it was like uh, is plenty cakes going to destroy us? Oh my God, that sounds so nerdy. I don't know. Why. Oh, I want to play that back. That's interesting. But anywho, it's yeah, a, will it? It's not going to destroy us, no. What will it it's do? Not like what, what's the worst that can happen? Besides just the crazy. What's going to happen? Eric says is it will get a slightly closer in orbit, and it will cause slightly more. Um, what's the word? More turbulence, right? And how the energy is. But Eric says that's not really likely. I mean, I don't see that happening. Eric says. Eric says what's what's really going on is the planet will get further and further away, and it'll. From, less, from the sun? From the sun and from Earth, yeah. Wait, the, the Earth from, will get farther away from the sun? Or no, the planet X. Oh, okay, okay. So it'll have less effect. Right, over time. Oh, that's good. So, Slowly, no big whoop. No big whoop. No, it's certainly not spiraling in at all. Okay. All right, I have this other question. 
I'm biting my fingernail. I'm not picking my nose. <laughs> sure. All right, so I've been reading uh, a reading member of the Chandler Eric blog for quite some time now. I've emailed you before. I was wondering if you could at some point ask Eric whether a, a the doggone, the doggone, no, it's doggone, D-O-G-O-N, people of Mali had knowledge of atoms, particles, cosmology, and even quantum physics long before the Western world uh, did, and B, whether the knowledge had been taught to them by aliens from Sirius. And C, whether the doggone people were in fact the authentic ancient Egyptians. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll just start out with, did they have knowledge of atoms, particle, quantum physics? Eric says that the people they're referring to, that's not really who they were. They did exist. They were human beings. That's not what they were, though. They didn't call themselves that. They didn't call themselves what? Whatever that name. Doggone? Doggone. Okay. To go on. Molly? Yeah. Okay. So they yeah. weren't called that, but did they un have an understanding, a knowledge of atoms, particles, uh, uh, cosmology, and quantum physics? Like, he just said that they were, that, that, that particular group, whoever they were, uh, he's showing me like a visual of where they came from. Where's that? Um, parts of Southern Europe and Northern Africa. Okay. Like that whole swath there. Okay. But they originated in Northern Africa. Ah, okay. Uh, they did what they call, like, the Indians call vision quests, right? Mm. So they would, like, uh, well, Eric they'd get high. <laughs> okay. Hallucinogens. <laughs> And then they would get visuals, like they'd go on these vision quests, and they would see what the universe was like, and then they would write it down, uh, and they got in touch with all of that information. They saw what, you know, um, in a very, very subtle way, helped to guide us to, to get to that point of quantum physics and to understand what the solar, that the solar system was there because it looks very much, if you look at an atom, Eric says, Right. like solar system, right? So it helped us to expand our awareness of the fact that there's so much more than just what we see on this planet. Are you saying that they were able to hallucinate, to, with, with help of hallucinogens, have a vision quest to the smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller <laughs> until they got to the particles right. and uh, the atom and electrons right. and all that? Right, absolutely. Oh, okay, that's what I felt. I, I've heard of that before. Yeah. Uh, did they learn this from aliens? Uh, no. Eric says this was more of um. And what did they take? Because I want some of that shit. Yeah, right? I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not anything that anyone is familiar with today. Uh, he just showed me. No licking toads. No, no licking toads. Some of it was, uh, <clears throat> no, that smell came back. Uh-oh. Oh. It smells like, like powder shoved up my nose. Like baby powder? Yeah. Oh, maybe maybe yeah. Michelle's having her baby soon. Well, you know, Eric said, that. Eric said that. Um, okay. That's my daughter, Michelle. Too, there was a guy that came across. I'm sorry, we're on a different topic. He said his name was Malachi, and I didn't know who he was mm -hmm. and, when I was meditating earlier. But anyway, um, uh, okay. What were, we, what were we talking about? <laughs> I got distracted. Uh, we're talking about the hallucinogen they used, yeah. and oh, oh, that's they right. didn't Eric, got, they didn't get the help of aliens. But no, Eric was Eric was saying that um, he was showing me what it was made of. It was there were several different types. One of them was a fungus okay. that grew in that area of northern yes. Africa, okay. and then there was another area where it was bark. Okay. Um, mixed with uh, ooh, mixed with manure. Oh. <laughs> What kind of manure? Man, you got to be desperate. Goat manure. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I guess it works. The goats have to be fed a certain food, he said. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, says no aliens. Uh, oh, was, were the Dagon people the authentic ancient Egyptians? He said, yes, they were the ones who helped to create that society long before that society was called that. He said they were from Northern Africa. Egypt is in Northern Africa, right? 
That sounds like a stupid American. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Yes, Egypt is. Okay. Yes, of course it is. But uh, all right, that's interesting. Anything else more on these pe interesting people? Uh, he was making a joke. He just said they knew how to party. But I guess they, they did, doing all those hallucinations. It's like, right. it's like having a kegger, but like infinite times. Yeah, yeah. He was just showing me this visual of how they were run. They had small, close-knit groups. Mm -hmm. And they always had one per you know, they always had one person who was kind of like the elder, like the person who was spiritually connected. Mm -hmm. They were big into all of that. And they influenced like a lot, right? Because he shows how they actually um, helped to plant the seeds for things like Wicca or Wiccan oh, okay. witchcraft type mm -hmm. stuff. But, you know, because it was all about like the earth and like, <laughs> he said they were the first hippies. Well, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. He showed this man in a, in a uh, like, like, um, Animal cloth outfit with, but with round glasses and his peace sign. <laughs> oh my God! All right, so how long ago were they? Did they exist? Was it before Christ? Yeah. That's good enough. No, no, I just saw the number thirty. So I don't, I don't think human beings were thirty thousand years ago, were we? Yeah, Eric says we were around for a hundred thousand years or more. Okay. Interesting. That's like a long time. So what do they know about cosmology? Um, they, they understood that stars moved in a certain way. Okay. Um, that you could, uh, but Eric says this is not unique to them. A lot of cultures had figured that out. That, you know, you could follow and figure out what the seasons were, when the seasons were changing, what was a good time to plant. Oh, yeah. Um, were, they, were they hybrids of aliens to have that kind of intellect? Do they have some alien DNA in them? Uh, you know, not, not, not like what people might think. Um, it's not like aliens came down and were interjected into them and changed their DNA, right? So were they pure humans? They were just like everyone else, but Eric says that the environment in part and also like the nurturing of the little groups, mm -hmm. that shapes how your brain will react to the environment, how, obs how, how much observation you will put into a situation, and how, okay. um, um, Agile you are, you know, with uh, creativity and things like that. And that's just, they're just one group of a lot of groups on the planet that were there. So they have nothing to do with uh, aliens at all? Never said no. Okay. Interesting. All right, one last question for this session. Uh, this is Eric said that they were, I'm sorry, he was telling just me about. Go ahead, this. tell me, whatever. Eric said way back when human beings were still like kind of walking hunched. Okay. We had, we had experience with aliens then. And then when human beings um, started to become civilized, in a sense, and developing big cities, mm -hmm. which happened simultaneously in multiple places. Like the Mayans, maybe? Oh, the that's Egypt. exactly who he brought up. The Mayans, okay. the Incas, oh, and yeah. like in Egypt. Okay. Um, they involved with us then. And then um, there was one time... Eric says everybody talks about Roswell and all this stuff. Uh, but during that time period, they were watching us more because we were doing nuclear weapons. Oh. Right? And so they were trying to, uh, how they did it, I don't know. But somehow they influenced us then. Okay. But very, very under the covers. It was like, it wasn't like it was in the open like in the past because, um, you know, people were like... Uh, I don't know, their minds were different. So you would have thought that they would have been more freaked out by aliens in ancient times, but Eric yeah. said, today we would have been more freaked out. Oh. And today we're much more powerful. We could much more easily hurt them oh. collectively today. And so they have to be more cautious with us because we had the power and still the fear. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, they won't really walk around with us openly until we've... Until later. Until we've matured. Yeah. We have to let go of our fear, Eric says. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about, I guess we have to go kind of quick, but uh, there's this something called the Miracle Staircase in Santa Fe, New Mexico. These 
nuns, um, you know, made this chapel or whatever and it had two stories but for some reason they forgot to include a staircase to get to the second floor I was like <laughs> okay well they must have been on the same thing the same stuff that the doggone people were on because i don't know how they could get away with that so they tried to ask people you know in the carpenters and stuff in the community to help and they just no we can't help you this space is too small there's nothing we can do Anyway, but then all of a sudden this man comes in on a donkey and off, offers to help them. And he carried absolutely nothing except for, like, a, some tools, whatever. And, and so he built this in, like, six months or whatever. First of all, they prayed to St. Joseph uh, for a long time, the, the patron saint of carpentry. I didn't know. It's probably a, so many saints. It's probably one for mufflers, I swear to God. But anyway, so... This one, St. Joseph, was for carpentry. And so, um, and then this guy shows up on the donkey. And he builds this in six months or so. I can't remember. Uh, but no nails, no screws, no glue. He didn't bring in wood for some reason. But it was built with wood that was not even from that region. And it had no central support. Engineers have no idea why when you step on it, it doesn't, like, collapse. Wow. It's so, real. Eric yeah. it's real, but I was just wondering, is it that's real? Eric yeah. is real. So who built it? Was it St. Joseph? The, the patron saint of Carpenter? Yeah, I'm still like wondering, well, how did he build it? Uh, yeah, I'll get, yeah, I want to know that too. Eric says it was not St. Joseph, but it was because of their prayers to him that made this, pulled this guy in. Okay. Yeah. So who built it? Who, who built it? Was it an alien? Was it a spirit? Was it, I mean, some supernatural paranormal dude? Eric said there are very wise, very connected people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Never know about. Never know about, right? Okay, right. Um, they have no ego. They have no desire to be known. Okay. They're like ghosts. They're real people, but they're like ghosts. Okay. Where they come into people's lives, they do things, amazing things. And then so they, it's not like an angel? No, not in this case. I mean, you know, there are certain people who, you know, you might label as an angel, right? Because of what they do while they're here on Earth. Uh-huh. This guy, you could, call him, you could classify him as, as like that. Okay. Uh, but, and, but, uh. Eric says, but he's also what I was describing earlier, where there's the kind of people that come in and they do what they're going to do, and then they just disappear and you never see them again. Yeah, he right? did, and he didn't even get payment or anything. He just right. went up and left. So right, that's true. Right. Yeah, this is what this guy was, and um, okay, so how did he do it? Right, that's what I was waiting on now. Uh, he's showing it to me, so I'm trying to figure out how to word it. So, like, for instance, Eric says, Mom, when it comes to, he said, think of it like on a molecular level. You know, human beings are starting to understand how um, uh, you can create super strong materials mm -hmm. based on how you lay, you know, the chemistry, basically, like the elements and things within that, and they lattice together and stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that on a larger scale, too, with a material. Um with certain kinds of materials, like this particular wood or whatever the material was that he used. Mm -hmm. He had experience with it in the past. It's very strong, mm -hmm. but this tree does not exist, or this wood or whatever this material is, does not exist in its state now or something. Really? It's extinct? He said it's just changed. Or changed. Okay. Where did uh, he get it if it was not from that region? He didn't pack it on his donkey. Right. Apparently. I, I mean, maybe he did. You can tell me. Oh. Eric. I'm sorry. This is why it makes sense now. Okay. Eric says the man... You know, Eric says, uh, you know, there are people on the planet, you know, who can move objects with their mind, right? That's mm -hmm. been documented. Oh, yeah. There are people who talk to dead people, right? Mm -hmm. Like you. Like me, right? There are people who can heal people, mm -hmm. right? 
There are also people who can change matter, make it take on a state that it wouldn't normally have, right? Okay. But, but if you look at it under a microscope, you would not see any difference from some other material. Okay. Something in the way that, that material, Eric, Eric says, and for me it's very easy because when I look at it, it's energetic-wise. Mm -hmm. But physically, when you look at it under a microscope or on an atomic level, it looks the same, right? All right. So Some energetically it's different, but physically it's not. But it looks the same, right? So he almost shows it like to me like you take a piece of wood and you see how it's laid, right? And then you take another piece of wood, like the kind he used to build that staircase, and it lays exactly the same. But if you could see the energy, like the aura of it, mm -hmm. its aura is different. It's almost like steel. Ah. Oh. So it, it, it can um, it can up it can hold things up. It'll last a lot longer. Uh, you can you can uh, you can connect it in ways, and it has to be connected in a certain way. Eric says. Eric says it's like when I talked about how things were. Uh, molecules were laid, uh, elements were laid together in a certain way, and you can create mm -hmm. something stronger, right? When you put all those pieces of wood together, or the materials that you use, in a certain fashion, they become super strong without any uh, connecting materials, no nails or nothing. Wow. Like, uh, he said it's kind of like a super strong Jenga. <laughs> wow, interesting. So yeah. basically, he worked with the energy. He was able, he's, yeah, he was able to work with the energy to make it strong and make everything adhere without nails, screws, or glue. Yeah. yeah. Now, how did it stay, how did like it stay doing, up without a central support? I'm, I've, I don't feel like I'm doing it justice when I'm describing it, but uh, uh, that's how he did it. No central support, Eric says it's how he laid it. I don't understand that. Well, because, part, all, because, because to me, when I see it, I, I see like a staircase with like pieces of wood just floating in the air. <laughs> yeah, it, it twirls. It's a, it curves. Yeah. But, um, oh, so yeah, yeah. So it's got like a, a central part with wood coming around it, like this. It, I don't know. I don't think it has a central support, like a, oh, like a rod oh, or anything. But I mean, like the way the wood is laid one on top of the oh, other. Okay, okay. Look at it in the, from like one perspective, it looks like there's a central support going down, but it's okay. not. It's just the wood, the way it's laid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to describe it any other way other than it's how he put the wood together. Hmm. The way that he laid it at the angles he chose, the way the wood was cut, and then of course the way the wood was manipulated. So did he use wood from the region, but make but change yeah. it to look like that it was not from that region? Eric says it was wood from the region. He also not only did he change it energetically, but he treated it in a certain way too, like used something on it. What do like you mean? A resin, like a chemical, right? Oh, okay. It would look different. Okay. And it also had 33 steps. And that's how many years Jesus lived, apparently, you know. We are, Jesus already told us that he wasn't crucified. He didn't die on the cross, so he lived longer than 33 years. But was there, is that a, just a coincidence or did that have some meaning? Uh, it was meant to honor the religion of the nuns. You know, oh, okay. That's a big part so it was purposeful. Of it. it was purposeful, he said. Okay. But yeah, it was it also uh, coincidental because it was exactly the right amount of steps it would need. I know. Uh, and the nuns didn't know that that was going to be the case. No. But it anything, was. Anything else about the miracle staircase before we close? Uh, Eric says that's, that's all I got on that. That's all you got. All right. Well, thank you, Eric. And all thank I got. you, Robert. You're welcome. Love Thanks. you guys. Love you too, Eric. Say bye, Mom. Mwah. To both of you guys and everybody, stay tuned for the information at the end of this tape. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.